Welcome back to Craftsman David. Today I'm going to show you how I made this beautiful truss bridge that's the feature wall of the baby room. The inspiration for the bridge came from this photo. I like the truss work, so I took it to CAD and first laid out the dimensions I wanted the bridge. From there I drew the truss work and used the mirror command to create the full bridge. After I had the bridge done, I broke it into pieces to be milled on the CNC machine. Here I'm starting by cutting the blanks that'll go on the machine. Now because this is kind of a complicated shape and I don't want to ruin nice plywood, I cut out a practice bridge out of hardboard and the CNC file goes something like this. Uh, the pieces are nested to get the best usage out of the material. And here's how those profiles look nested inside VCarve Pro. This program generates the code that the machine runs off of. So here I'm going to run a preview. This will do the same thing the machine does except virtually and of course much faster. And after a few seconds, here it is, ready to carve. I learned a few things when I cut out my test bridge, and one thing is these clamps around the edges are not enough support. I continually had to pause the program and move them. So to solve that, I'm going to take this area that I know is dead space, and I'm going to drive a screw in to secure that. After doing some final checks and squaring the machine, we're off and running. I'm chasing the machine around with the dust hose because the pieces are so large the dust boot would hit and I would lose capacity, so I'm running without it. There are points here where I'm pausing the machine to pull out the piece that was cut. Since I'm stack cutting, there's two layers, and if I let the top layer sit there, it'll jam the machine. I found this out during the test bridge. Oops. Similarly, here you see me holding down the edge of the bridge on the final pass, just to make sure it doesn't slip. Well, we're getting there. A few more triangles, and a little bit more holding the bridge down on the final pass. Alright, I'm finally finished. Here's the result. It turned out beautiful. This is going to be the middle section, and this is going to be the edge of the bridge. If you're wondering how long it took to carve out on the X-Carve, 2 hours, 3 minutes, 15 seconds. Not too bad for a hobby machine. And it looks like the time I took to square the machine before the cut was worth it. Look at that. Perfectly square. And here's what's left of the machine, just the carved up waste with the pieces removed, and a whole pile of little triangles. Now I'll sand these pieces up. I got a 180 grit sandpaper. I want to remove this kind of frizzly edge left by the CNC. Now I need to start working on a structure to connect the trusses together. I'm going to use poplar because it's going to be painted anyway, so it doesn't need to be that nice of wood. My resawing skills need a little bit of coming. Look, look at how much of a shelf I got here. The blade drifted a little bit. Hopefully I can still get one of them planed down to quarter inch. I always love looking at wood at the midway being plane stage. You can see right here it's rough. That's still the bandsaw. Where it's smooth, that's where the planer got it. So you can see that the uh, topography is all over the place. Well folks, these boards aren't as bad as I thought. The one on the right is fully planed to a quarter inch. The one on the left just has this little spot where there's still band cell marks. Well I've set up the router table to mill rabbits in my top deck board and it's going to be kind of big. That way when I place the trusses on it, it's going to overhang the trusses a little bit and give you kind of a reveal as you look at the bridge. It'll be like the deck of the bridge overhanging the structure. the cross members for the bridge out of 3 8 square dowels. Well, I might be a crazy man, but here I go. I've got all my clamps. I'm going to try and glue up this bridge in one swoop. Yeah, I know. We'll see how it goes. Now with stage one complete, I can start putting in these cross braces. I'm just going to put a dab of glue on each side and spread it gently. 
and stick them in just like that. And here's the bridge all glued up. I'm using somewhere around 40 clamps. And down here, the bridge was tilting, so I have a clamp to my workbench to pull it back straight. Now it's looking pretty good. Well, now I'm taking a little time just to sand the bridge up, get rid of all the rough edges and some of the glue spots. Just like everything in woodworking, it's got a good side and a side that's just okay. So, of course, when you sand it, concentrate more on the good side. With the bridge flipped upside down, I marked out this mounting hole, and I'll drill that out now. And a quick test fit. Ah, perfect. This end of the bridge came out a little bit problematic. My supporting block I glued in came out past the end of the bridge, so I'm going to shave that down here at the disc sander. And after shaving that, quick check. Yep, still square. One of the joys of spring weather is getting to paint outside. I don't like getting spray paint in the shop. This works much better. The outside works great, but do be careful that birds don't drop things on your project. Ugh, I'll have to clean that up. Wow, that train is awesome. It turned out so much better than I thought it was. It was a little more work. But the reward in the end is spectacular. I hope you enjoyed this build and you learned something along the way. Until next time.